Hi, and welcome to the second video in our Identifying Insect series. This video is about how to identify Coleoptera, or beetles. In this workshop, we're first going to discuss what is a beetle and what they aren't, some fun facts about beetles, their general anatomy and their key features you use for identification, and we're going to go over how to identify some of the major beetle families. You can use a notebook to create your own insect ID book to keep track of the beetles you see um, around your home and in your neighborhood. You can also use it to take notes during this presentation. Feel free to pause if you want to get a better look at some of the photos or identification strategies. First off, what is a beetle? Beetles are insects with four wings that are modified into hard wing cases, called elytra. The elytra cover and protect the hind wings and ab abdomen, and they also have biting or chewing mouth parts. Beetles, or coleoptera, have elytra and biting mandibles. Hemiptera, or true bugs, can look very similar to beetles as pictured here. However, hemipterans are not beetles as they do not have elytra. Instead, they have an X or Y shape on their wings and they have piercing mouth parts. You can learn more about hemiptera in workshop four in this series. Beetles are the largest group of living organisms known to science. Even with plants included in the count, one in every five known organisms is a beetle. Scientists have described over 350,000 species of beetle, with many more still undiscovered. By some estimates, there may be as many as 3 million beetle species living on the planet. The order Coleoptera is the largest order in the entire animal kingdom. One of the smallest beetles is only a quarter of a millimeter in length, and the largest known beetle can reach 20 centimeters long. Species in certain beetles families produce light. They're also known as lightning bugs or fireflies. Their bioluminescence occurs through a chemical reaction involving an enzyme called luciferase. Fireflies flash signals to attract potential mates with the light organ on the abdomen. Glowworms and click beetles also have this ability. A beetle fossilized in Burmese amber together with grains of pollen reveals the relationship between these plants and insects long before flowering plants and bee pollinators appeared. Beetles are insects and therefore have three body segments, head, thorax, abdomen, and three pairs of legs. When looking at a beetle dorsally, the first pair of wings are hardened to form cases called elytra. This feature is very characteristic of beetles and the name Coleoptera translates as sheathed wings. The thorax, also called the pronotum, is a section between the head and the elytra. The antennae, palps, and eyes are attached to the head. The legs are made up of the coccyx, only seen from underneath, the femur, the tibia, and the tarsus. And the tarsus is made up of small segments called tarsi. One of the key features for beetle ID is the tarsal formula. This refers to how many tarsi there are. Sometimes a dichotomous key a tool used to identify insects will ask you to count the number of segments in each leg. In this case, the tarsal formula of this beetle is 555, five, five, as each leg has five tarsi. The tarsal shape is also important. The shape of the tarsal segments can be simple, lobed, 
or bilobed. Simple tarsi uh, are, sim are very simple in shape, and sometimes they can appear thread-like or elongated. Lobed or bilobed tarsi are segments that are lobed in shape. Bilobed tarsi can look slightly like a heart. Next, the antennae type can vary between different beetle families. Filiform antennae are thread-like. They can be clubbed, gradually expanded at the end, or very fan-like. Now I'm going to discuss some of the major beetle families and how to identify them. The Carabidae, or ground beetles, are one of the largest families. They are a nice family to begin studying as there are many well-developed guides and keys. Ground beetles are skilled predators, often hunting other invertebrates both in the day and night, like the green tiger beetle. As the name suggests, ground beetles spend much of their time hunting on the ground and only a small number of carabidae can fly. Many species, both larva and adult, because beetles are larva when they first hatch, feed on slugs and snails and other insects. Some also feed on carrion, and some species attack aphids. Ground beetles can be found all year round and many overwinter as adults. This makes them a nice group to begin studying as they are often easy to find. Some of the key features we can use to identify carabid beetles include the large trochanters on the hind legs, the forward protruding head and mouth parts, and the tarsa formula is 555 and they're mostly simple. Finally, the antennae are filiform. Next up, we have the rove beetles, or staphylinidae, or staphs. They're another predatory family of beetles that are extremely species rich. Many rove beetles are predatory, but there are also a wide number of species that feed on decaying vegetation, fungi, and algae. Some species are also parasitic on other insects. Some key features to identify staphylinids are truncate-shortened sh elytra. These elytra are very small and short compared to other beetle families, and there are at least three abdominal segments exposed. In most other families, these are covered by the elytra. The antennae are filiform, and they're generally very elongate beetles. They're very charismatic to identify at the family level. This colorful group is the Chrysomelidae, or the seed and leaf beetles. Adult and larva leaf beetles feed on all sorts of plant tissue, and species are fully herbivorous. Many are serious pests of cultivated plants, like the Colorado potato beetle. They're oval or round in shape, and many are really appealing because they're brightly metallic color. You can commonly find them on plants and flowers. To ID these beetles, you can look at their tarsi. They appear as if they're 444, but they actually have a fifth hidden tarsal segment that can be easily missed. See the red arrow. They're often metallic and very colorful, which makes them a popular family. Their tarsi can have some bilobed segments. See the heart-shaped segment on the foreleg here. This next group, the weevils, are one of my favorites due to their recognizable elongated snout. Weevils are almost entirely plant feeders and most species are associated with a narrow range of hosts meaning that they only eat one type of plant. They're very common insect pests in agriculture. Some key features to identify weevils include that the first segment of the antennae is long and elbowed. 
The Apioni day have no shape and the antennae are often stripped. There is a long rostrum in both of these families. The Cerambicids or longhorn beetles are another charismatic family of beetles. They're typically characterized by extremely long antennae, which are often as long or longer than the beetle's body. The scientific name of this beetle family goes back to a figure from Greek mythology. After an argument with nymphs, the shepherd Cerambus was transformed into a large beetle with horns. They're associated with wood where the larva develop. Some feed on plant matter, and many are pests in the forestry industry as they can destroy trees. Key features to identify cerambicids are the, of course, the antenna. The second antennal segment is shorter than the first and third segment. They're very elongate beetles that can vary greatly in size. The elytra is generally wider than the thorax and they have extremely long antennae. Soldier beetles are another very colorful family of beetles, and they're unique in that they're soft body, and they are also common on flowers. They are cosmopolitan in distribution. One of the first described species has a color pattern reminiscent of the red coats of early British soldiers, hence the common name. Some of the key features to identify soldier beetles include their elongate body plan and their 555 tarsal formula. They have straight filiform antenna and they're soft bodied. They are also slightly rectangular in shape. Next, we have the scarabs. Scarabs are stout bodied beetles many with bright metallic colors. They have distinctive clubbed antenna composed of plates called lamellate that can be compressed into a ball or fanned out like leaves to sense odors. The front legs of many species are broad and adapted for digging. In some groups, males and sometimes females have prominent horns on the head to fight over mates or resources. Some key features of scarabs include the fan-like club on the antennae, which are nine or 10 segmented. You may need a microscope to count all the antennal segments. They often have flattened and spiny tibia for burrowing. They are generally very heavily built beetles, appearing much stockier than other beetle families. Next, we have Sylphidae, or carrion beetles. These beetles feed on decaying orga organic matter, such as dead animals. Sylphids are considered to be of importance to forensic entomologists because when they are found on a decaying body, they are used to help estimate how long the body has been dead for. They also have a mutualistic relationship with mites. The mites get transferred to carry on by the beetles and they reduce the number of competitors so both species are able to reproduce successfully underground. Carrion beetles have eleven segments in their antennae and it ends in an abruptly capped club. This beetle, shown in the photo, can be seen with the mites. The last family we're going to discuss today are the Ilateridae, or click beetles. They have the ability to spring their body in defense, which causes a clicking sound. Their larvae are common pests of corn, also known as wireworms. Some key features of these beetles are a prosternum, which extends on the underside of the thorax. This feature can also be seen from the side. 
The general shape and form of cliff beetles is very characteristic. They have an elongate thorax and slightly tapering elytra. That's it for our workshop on Coleoptera. Be sure to check out our videos on Lepidoptera and Hemiptera as well. Good luck finding beetles!